soldiers in Zeon, so we are certain to be victorious in this war! that you have questions for me Scoop. i mean some people have questions for you okay maybe maybe it's me i don't know there might be you know there's a lot of them or a small amount how popular is adam uh well adam got the most questions yes which revenge on last time where it's just nothing but fucking mad gun Mm. Which is funny because Madgun only has that one question that I talked to you about that I'm like, I don't even, I don't even know if I'm going to ask that one. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> don't worry. You won't have a problem getting content out of Matt for 30 minutes yeah. or however long. He'll Did, just, he'll just spew content at you. I told you how long we recorded for Dallas last night, right? Quite a bit. Uh, F- yeah, like close to an 50 hour. minutes, 50 minutes of fucking audio. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, that doesn't surprise me. And we had much much less questions for that. So let's see how this fucking goes. Yeah, this is your rodeo. How do you want to kick this off? Oh, you know, we, that cold open. Anyway. Uh. Okay. Cold open. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very familiar with this strategy. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's it's, it's the way <laughs> Fetty's Cup is run. Yeah. We operate solely on cold open. Without them, we'd have no idea how we start a podcast. We would just sit there with their thumb in our ass the entire time. Also, like, you also have the advantage of it's a recurring thing. Yeah. So you have the ability to swap from the cold open randomly to do the, what you did, like, in the early days of the last time on Fetty Scum. And it's just, like, Lone Star and Copilot giving you a re- Well, I guess you can't have Copilot do it anymore because you fucking mercilessly murdered him. But... <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> And I'll do it again. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So here, here's the other other side of this one that's uh, made you mm-hmm. have a lot of questions. You have your multiple personalities that have to answer a couple of these. Now, now hold on. They're, they're characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get mad. Yeah, no, let's, not, let's not make, seem at, I'll make Adam seem worse than he is, all right? Yeah, your, your multiple personalities. <laughs> We all know Cav is your unbridled rage that you feel towards the outside world. Look, I uh, I do relate to Cav quite a bit. Cav's probably uh, the one I relate to the most in a lot of ways. And Rast is who you feel like when the cast comes after you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. I see where you're going. All right. Continue, Mr. Freud. <laughs> all right. I'll stop fucking around with you. <laughs> Just kidding. You've, you've signed up for this shit. Yeah, no, I expected to be mercilessly stoned for 30 minutes is what I expected from this q <laughs> You're the one that gave me the job, man. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but I just know what sort of questions to uh, expect, honestly. Oh, they're not, they're not nothing too crazy. Your first cool. one's going to come in from Twitter. Oh. Uh... Oh, yeah. Username Turniphead. Um, okay. Turniphead would like to know what was your uh, favorite moment to record? Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, I know. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a loaded question. Je- Dallas had a hard time with it, too. Yeah. Um, I think personally, just personally, it's going to be a bit of a disappointing answer because it's not like a moment, it's a feeling. Feeling. It's a vibe that Adam gets. I need to really stop referring to myself in the third person in this interview. I. I can't keep doing that. Um, you, you need to also not fucking deep throw the mic on me, please. What? No, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> I do it all the time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so on uh, several different occasions, I've had to give a monologue in the in, in like either in character or as a narrator. So either like Rast talking for a bit, Cav talking for a bit, some someone talking for a bit, you know, or just as a narrator talking for a bit. And sometimes 
we record that and like i always record it like in the moment with the rest of the cast but like you know eh, say if it's going to be the cap of an episode or if it's relaying important information uh i'll re-record it for dallas and we're, we're, we're clean put the cleaner version in there so that like you get like or maybe i forgot an important detail or maybe uh Maybe it just didn't, I, I stumbled over my words. You know, that never happens, right? It never, that bad. never, never, never. Happens. So, you know, we clean it up for dramatic, you know, reveals. But on occasion, I get it right pretty much in the recording. Uh, I like those moments. <laughs> I, I like when I nail like a monologue or a line that I've been like delivering in my head for a week preparing for an episode. Uh, or like, oh yeah, this is how they're gonna say it. This is how, you know, this is how I I will say this when they do this, and when it goes when when it goes according to plan, I very much like that. Pretty much any cool thing that Rast, I know Rast saying cool things, uh -huh. but yep. he has, um, <laughs> or, or or Cav or Sark or anyone has said that that went well, and I didn't have to re-record for it to come off well. <laughs> I'm happy about those. My favorite recently was uh, what purple twink crawled up your ass and died. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I like that one a lot. That one was kind of off the cuff. I didn't plan it ahead of time, but I was very proud of that one. Just, just proud of like your improv skill in the moment. I mean, I would not call that an anticlimactic answer because it's. It's a sense what? of accomplishment, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, and it's I mean, alternatively, taking the correct uh, collect uh, the 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 question more directly, it's a uh, it, it's a bit hard to think of all the things that happen and like the the moment in recording that was really awesome. But I can't give you one. I can give you my actual like, oh, while we were recording this, I'm like, yes, yes. As like a director, like you can see me like dressed like Stanley Kubrick on the side. Like, yes, keep going. Yes. Um, a co pilot's death. There you go. You know, I feel like that that's that's a scene that's going to keep coming up in a lot of these uh, these Q&A's. I think I traumatized a whole generation of listeners, which is uh, it's not my intention, but I'll take it. D Dallas, feel free to cut this part. Because this is going to be from this is the last interview as well. But I was explaining to him last night, the mm -hmm. uh, the moment I actually heard that for the first time, um, mm -hmm. I was back here in Florida in a drive through at Starbucks. Great place to hear it. But yeah, trying to podcast. trying to not cry and like give this lady my order for a fucking <laughs> <laughs> Grande Caramel Frappuccino. And she's probably like looking at me like, because I'm, I'm in uniform still. Like I just got off work. Oh man! I hadn't even made it all the way home yet, and it's just like, oh my god, god. that was a that was a big moment. It was a big moment to get punched with right then and there. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I'm 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 happy with how it turned out as kind of like a director from a director sense. So to go further in on that scene, mm -hmm. you pull a switcheroo on us. Yeah, a pretty heavy switcheroo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, how did you come up with the that that how that scene went down? Um, well, I was just thinking of the most uh, painful way possible I could deliver <laughs> the scene. <laughs> um, and that was what I came up with after thinking about it. So I, I write as a hobby and uh, oftentimes my stories tend to be tragic and have horrible endings and uh, b bad things like that happen. And I try to think of ways of uh, maximizing uh, the 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 suffering of the scene. I know that sounds <laughs> incredibly fucked up. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to make an impactful scene here. I, I got to maximize the suffering if it's going to be a scene about suffering for the listener. Anyways, it did take me a few weeks to think about it where I wanted to do a switcheroo. Um, like I said, Dallas wanted to play a new character. And so he didn't know how he was going to die, really. Not, not the specifics. He just knew that it was coming and that when it started to feel right he'd be like okay yeah this is where i die <laughs> but the rest of the cast didn't know i'm kind of sad like we didn't have the ability to get a live reaction of like everyone's face as it kind of went down yeah limits of the medium <laughs> yeah i know i'm just i'm just curious just to know what the, the looks were on everyone else's face as this was happening because Everyone had played fast and loose up until that point because there was 
seemingly no repercussions for their actions. <laughs> <laughs> it's called lulling them into a false sense of security and also having a system you hate, and so therefore you don't want to use it. Mm. That was the old system prior to that, pretty much. The majority of that prior to that was like the old system. And I was not happy with it. And so I started to avoid it. Avoid using it. Because that was still during the initial rework, right? Mm-hmm. And then you'd moved to what you've basically reworked out as your newer system for still in the Powered by the Apocalypse style. And yeah, then you like, moved to the new, 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 new. Yeah, so the one we're out is kind of modeled after uh, GURPS. I know it sounds stupid, but that's what it's called. I, 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 I know. I've, I've been around long enough for GURPS to okay, have crossed my table more than once. Okay, so... It's like at least how the dice work and how the skills work. It's kind of uh, based on GURPS. The interpretation of how kind of skills uh, and your attributes kind of go together and like you describe what you're going to do and then I tell you the two things that that methodology comes from Powered by the Apocalypse because that's the concept behind the moves is that you give the players this move set of what they're describing they want to do. They don't say like, oh, I'm going to roll my agility plus my acrobatics. They say like, oh, I'm going to get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here being a move. And then, you know, you roll on that. Yeah. Um, the methodology being you you think narrative first. Um, so in the same vein, the players tell me what they want to do. And then I tell them which two skills to mix. Uh, which is also very, uh, very Vampire the Masquerade. I have uh, quite a uh, quite a Frankenstein's monster going on here, but I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs> I was like, I know it's 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 definitely been a little bit to grasp in the beginning of like trying to fully understand what's going on with the system, and like I I knew in this previous episode like you could hear a little bit of Cat's frustration of like just trying to understand the way the one of the rules mm -hmm. was going down because like it. It is a very different thing from what we're all used to. Like, yeah, it's it's more crunchy, but I felt there needed to be more crunch for me to be happy with the system. Um, but I didn't want to obviously didn't want to make it as crunchy as a as a lot of systems are, because I mean, that's why Betty's comes a podcast. If, if, if we had played it and it was and it was Lancer or it was Mechton Zeta. Anywhere near that level of crunchiness, we uh, we would not have kept playing. We would have recorded one episode. It would have been four hours long, and we would have been, eh, fuck, fuck doing that. Yeah. <laughs> and we wouldn't have done it. Uh, Fetty's Gum only exists because we went to a narrative system, and we were able to kind of role play it more, uh, lean on the narrative, and kind of come up with what was a radio drama with, with light rules. And so I had to keep whatever we moved to fairly light. And it is it's just a little weird in concept, but I hope when I do release it that it'll it'll be well liked because I I just I I basically pivoted from making a system that uh, I was viewing as kind of penultimate to making a system that simply like I enjoyed running. Uh, it was a lot easier. And I know if, like I enjoy it. There's bound to be a few people out there who enjoy it. I'm not gonna say it's an amazing system, but uh, there's a few people who will think like me and be like, ah, yeah, I like this. At the end of the day, like you're not here trying to create a new RPG system and sell it and that be your whole medium. Like that's, yeah. that's not the goal here. It's it's so that you have something to tell your story and have mm -hmm. fucking fun with your 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 party. Yeah, and so yeah, the initial direction where I was trying uh, very hard to kind of lean into the methodology of Powered by the Apocalypse games was just not yielding the results I wanted for this kind of game. I needed a little bit more crunch. And I could I could tell a few other listeners from what they said, they, they definitely wanted more crunch as well. But primarily, I wanted more crunch. It feels good when numbers line up and shit, you know? Understandable. I was like, right. I honestly think like what y'all did with Powered by the Apocalypse and how how y'all weren't like, we'll say as um, role heavy as D&D &D is. D&D, mm -hmm. D &D, D &D, depending on like who you have as a DM, like can be ungodly role heavy. Like, yes. I think that is one of the big things that like definitely drew me in when I just randomly saw the, the Facebook ad for you guys. OK, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it definitely can. And like leading up to our first 
well, even before our first two episodes, I was listening to a lot of uh, live play podcasts where they where they use various systems. Yeah. And that was a reoccurring theme that I found was horrible. I would listen and then I would listen for an hour and I you know, only one turn in combat had happened um, or something like that. Or it's just like they're arguing about the rules or it's 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 literally just moving from one role to the next role to the next role and i quit so many podcasts that i was listening to for examples because of those reasons where it's just like this is not what i want from this i was like well there has to be other people who want a more like story driven one because i feel like a lot of people are trying to be critical role in critical role you have a gm who, who really knows what the fuck i'm doing and they, they, they run the rules very quick and Overall, they're fairly rolls light, and you have professional improv actors who can fill the dead space very well. Most most people trying this don't have have that, so I needed something to facilitate something similar, I guess, a system that would put role playing on the spot. And you know, uh, I knew from role playing with my friends in the past that they would be you know good for it. I was like the group you ended up with. I think all of you work together pretty well. Yeah, I'm very happy with them. So we've made it through one question. It's 20 minutes in. We're doing good. Rapid We're doing fire. real good. We're doing real good. <laughs> <laughs> Rapid it, fi- lightning round. Lightning round uh, me. I will, I, will, I will save a couple of the short ones for lightning round if we have to get to that. <laughs> Got it. Um, all right. So this one comes in from Twitter. It's actually from Siege. Um, Twitter right, user okay. Siege Fault. We had this discussion yesterday. Is it Siege or is it Siege? Siege. Siege. Okay, I'm I just, think right. I, I don't know. I, I I want to say that's what it is. I'm just I'm always afraid. It's, it's okay. a word that I have a hard time with. I don't know why. Anyway, siege. Twitter uses siege, siege fault. Yeah. Um, if your character was forced into a cooking sh- for Gordon Ramsay to impress him in a competition against the others from the Ghost of the Inverness, what would you cook? And do you think you would win, Adam? You are specifically Rast Marco. Ah, <sighs> uh, so <laughs> I I hmm. God, what would Rast go for? I don't think he'd win. I can go ahead and answer that part. That's just not winning. Winning in a, a straight up and down contest like that's not really Rast's thing. Character wise, he just doesn't have that winning energy about him. But uh, meal wise, I think pre diner in Mobile, it would probably be something simple, a sandwich or something. Post diner in Mobile, he might try to make pancakes. <laughs> might try to make pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. That, that that breakfast had an impact on him. Eating breakfast while watching Lady Sark get her ass kicked. Yeah, that was a uh... spoilers. I don't know. Uh, uh, a... <laughs> By the time this comes out, if you've listened to this before, you listen to the episodes that came for it. You did this yeah. shit to yourself. Yeah, I think that's fair. Siege, Siege specifically had it as Rass, but I, I want to also hear what the fuck would Cav cook? I don't think Cav can cook. So funny little, funny little inside, I don't know, behind the scenes shit. Uh, I have role played Cav in a different Gundam game as Cav, same Cav, and he has tried to cook in that game and it was horrible. I don't know. So he basically just uses his rations and tries to does, do things to make his rations taste better, but uh, kind of just makes them worse somehow. Um, burns them or something. It was a fucking horrific, horrific blob of non-food that he then proceeds to eat uh, without issue. Man's got an iron stomach. Yeah. Enough of those uh, weird shots to your spine through your stomach will do that to you, I guess. I guess. What's funny is I have another Gundam RP character who is literally a fucking chef. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all, I, I haven't used them in Fetty Scum yet. I do plan on introducing them at some point as a minor character. But, uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Like, the question's tailor made for them. I, I wouldn't say it's tailor made for them. I'd say it, was a, it would just be easier for them. It would have been easier. There would have been an actual answer. It'd be like, a shrimp parfait or something shrimp parfait that's just mo- moving on that just you disgusted me okay so it comes in from facebook user jake howard if you guys decide to keep going on after the one-year war will you just do a straight seven-year time skip to zeta or are you going to do some good old stardust memory shenanigans i want to say you've talked about this in the past 
A I have bit. briefly, I have briefly, but I've never nailed anything down specific. But as we're getting closer and closer, I um, I kind of have more definitive plans now. Uh, we're effectively going to do a uh, a brief series, likely as mostly different characters, not entirely different characters, for Stardust Memory as a break between Zeta and the One Year of War. So expect like a an episode mini series in between with new characters for most players uh, occasionally i don't know depending on how the one year war ends a few of them might be in the one shot um of the main cast um but uh more likely than not it's mostly going to be new characters so think like the the one short little zeon side story we did with ferdinand sleeps and and the the rest of the fuckers in in that uh, that carrier ship no body, no death, and I am still expecting Fern to deliver me those memoirs. <laughs> you guys are so dedicated to no body, no death. I, I'm I'm actually not the uh, the one that's dedicated to no body, I, no yeah, death. Yeah, it's it's sucking shadow. I'm aware. It, yeah. It's very much shadow. <laughs> yeah, it's it's shadow's catchphrase, and it's like, buddy, all the time people die with without leaving a body. <laughs> Look, man, uh, new type goes through a thing. We we know that Ferdinand sleeps was a was a new type. So it's, it's fine. <laughs> He's out there. Him and him and co-pilot are writing those memoirs together. Anyway, <laughs> uh, this one also comes in from Facebook. This guy has a fancy fucking name, Christopher Barstad Alder. That is a uh, very fancy fucking name. Holy that is a, shit! It's a fair. It's. A, I, I feel like that needs to be an RPG name. Honestly, like, I would. Just... I would marry that man just for his name, Adam Barstad Alder. God, I I, I can understand like. That's definitely the moment where I understand leaving your your middle name in because it's just it's so fucking strong. It's a strong name. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like some kind of like royalty. Yeah, or, it's a good name. Or noble. Good name. Okay, I'm done sucking this guy off. Yep. <laughs> That's the <good> question. <laughs> so this is a two parter question. Um, part one is going to be for Cav Walker. Okay. How do you keep your bloodlust up and running for so long? Um, is there anything you do to unwind or calm down after mass murder and gladiatorial pit fights? <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> well, you know, bloodlust comes from a, <clears throat> a fire deep inside you, you know. Just think of what you had before. Think of what they took away from you. Focus on that. You won't have a problem, you know. Things just go black, heads pop, you wake up, problem solved. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that this man is currently in the office using, it looks like someone's fucking femur as a toothpick. Um, please send help. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the uh, to unwind thing, um, all right, I'll have to go back to the other RP. Um, Cav liked smoking in hallways and uh getting in arguments with goody two-shoe pilots basically bullying green pilots so that is what he does to unwind <laughs> so he's just an asshole yeah yeah the, the goal <laughs> was to make a an asshole character uh yeah he's he's lovable in a way but uh <laughs> yeah he's an asshole now for ras marco <laughs> uh, wouldn't it be nice if all this was just an awful concussion-induced fever dream brought on by one of Lady Stark's special sessions? Oh, God. <laughs> Maybe even if you aren't actually in the war and that, was it Dee Dee? Is curled up with a nice book next to you after you wake up from the nightmares of war. Um, okay, so. This is a very long question. Yeah, I'm not, me, I'm not even uh, sure if there's actually a question in there. Hang on. <laughs> it, it, it basically would it be good and just asking for the character's reaction because i can remember what it was dd or vb based on what characters from uh eighth ms team's girlfriend was. uh it's bb Mikkel's. is uh Mikkel's. It, then it is dd because okay. we literally just d did kind of the the opposite like you know sound there for that is so it, it bad is that ras is less of a bitch than Mikkel? Uh, I mean, I wanted him to be less of a bitch, so I'm happy that that turned out to be the case. It's, it's, that says more, more about Mikkel's character than yeah. anything else. Oh, God, I, uh, I really do wish it would have just all been a dream, but, you know, I don't think I'm lucky enough for it to turn out that way. Some people just pull the short straw in life. 
there. That's his reaction to there thinking about that. <laughs> Skipping past the ones that we're going to use for lightning round. I have a feeling lightning round's not going to go well. I, I have a feeling it's not going to either. Here we go. From Twitter user Zachary Salsa. Hey. How similar are the GM stat-wise versus the old Zakus of the mobile anchors? Uh, I mean, the GMs are a bit better. Um, the cold district types are, are are like considerably better, but the 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 regular GMs are a bit better. Um, but to compare it to old stat lines, I kind of can't do that because of it's different systems now. But okay, there you go. That's have you, an answer. Ha, have you really <laughs> written the old Zakus back into your? stuff stat wise because you haven't had to use them yet i haven't that's why i say like i can't really make the comparison but like i would make them just slightly less powerful than the the gems and then like uh con not considerably but even more so for the code district type but yeah i haven't used them really outside of like just mentioning that there are zakus out there so they haven't really uh come back in stat wise because at the time of us recording this like the only things that have actually had combat have been the e in the new system mm-hmm the pixie mm -hmm. the goof and then all's qualm had combat but i don't know how much of that you were really rolling as combat and how much you were doing as more uh exposition uh, that was more exposition uh yeah. just to speed thing along unless it's going to unless it's going to matter in a narrative way in other words unless i'm fighting a player i don't yeah. roll for enemies so I didn't when think it yeah, <laughs> it, the, things just go how I think they should go in a fight between two NPCs. I I've been at tables where fucking GMs roll for NPCs who are fighting other NPCs. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, I, I understand it's a preface thing and I don't want people to feel bad if you do that. But like, I don't get it. <laughs> I it don't just get slows it. the game down I, as far as like, as far as I can say, especially if you're in a like for me, it was dark heresy and dark heresy can be a bit of a slog sometimes in combat, if, especially if you don't know what you're doing completely. You have to look up all of these. Uh, fuck, what are they called? They're like special rules that apply to your character, uh, special phrases, keywords. No, they're not called keywords. They're called in the tabletop, I think. Ah, fuck it. Whatever. Next question. Whatever. <laughs> uh, second part of the question how do you typically decide which UC characters might fit your story slash narrative without messing too deeply with canon? Oh, easy. That's an easy one. That's an easy, easy question. Uh, I don't introduce anyone the cast would know. There. <laughs> I introduce people the cast won't recognize, generally speaking. I think it's always funny, like, having uh, just a post-episode talk with Jason or something and him being like, oh, like... It was this character, and you're, and you're just like, shh, shh, shh. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah J I mean, so Jason's very aware of a lot of the minor characters in Gundam uh, and Gundam side story stuff. And so yeah, he always calls me out on stuff. Like, y you're talking about this character, right? <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I try to keep it to side characters and ones that the, the cast won't recognize. And I also, how I tend to involve them with the plot pays a good deal toward uh, the the cast not, you know, messing with them. So, like, the most important character plot-wise I've introduced that is a canon character ha so far has been Garmazabi, Char, if you count, over the telephone. And they are, they're in a situation where the cast can't do anything to either of them, really. They're just kind of there. Okay. I guess I introduced Armro in the Gundam in the that one side story. I mean, is that side story canonical for Fetty Scum itself? Yes. Yeah, that happened. Okay. That happened. That would that happened to give a sense of time as to where we were in the one year war. Because that happened in episode three or four of the Mobile Suit Gundam. One of those. I, th I think it was either three or four. I think it was three because four is descending to Earth and five is when we meet Garmazabi. Don't make fun of how I remember Mobile Suit Gundam episodes by the proximity to Garmazabi. <laughs> I mean, it's a <laughs> it's a very clear line in the series, though. Because mm -hmm. he's only there for, what, five episodes? Yep, he is, he's five to ten and then he uh, his funeral is in episode twelve. Episode five, he I think he appears on a screen, and that's about it. So he technically almost isn't even in that episode. That's really just him uh, talking to Char mm -hmm. briefly. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, Your next one comes in from Twitter user Pragmatiky. Hi. With the possibility of journeying into space comes the possibility of an episode at at Space Colony, Texas. Uh, beach episode <laughs> slash barbecue at texas win <laughs> uh inevitably i will say inevitably you you kind of called me out i'm a big fan of western shit there's no way we're not going to texas colony okay we are we're going to we're going to texas colony okay it will happen and you also called me out on the beach episode uh, i i wanted to put a beach episode there so <laughs> there, there you go damn yeah, this is this person is very dialed in on like my general sense of things I wanted to do in space. Now, with the plan of going to uh, Texas, mm-hmm. are you thinking you might do it as another side story style option, or do you think you would bring the main cast? Because oh, you do uh, have some actual Gundam canon going on there. Oh, it wouldn't be at the same time. It'd probably be before the whole Makuve Shar uh, Armuro fight. Okay. Um, so it would it would be when the you know, the colony is still basically just abandoned, but uh, it had yet to be filled with mines. Or depending on which version of canon uh, you're listening to, still very much filled with mines. I'll leave that up to be a surprise, I guess. Because in one version, Makuve puts them there. Um, in another version, the colony company put them there. I don't know why the colony company put them there. Which version is that? The one where Makuve is not there for that fight, which is the movie version. Mm. Yeah, I think. God, I need to. It's been a while since I've seen the movies. Mm. But yeah, I think in the movie version, he's not there for that fight. The TV show version where he is. Okay. That's that's where he dies in the TV show. In the movie version, he doesn't die. He actually continues on to Axis and dies sometime there if you're if you follow Shar's uh deleted affair as canon which eh, yeah, flip a coin at this point uh he dies on the way to axis he doesn't even make it to axis if you follow just zeta he probably made it to axis along with Shar and a lot of other Zeon refugees and died sometime there and after i guess flip a coin and uh hold breath of whether or not you're gonna have mines there in that beach episode oh lord I don't, I don't, I don't want to see the gang in mines. <laughs> I mean, the new, the new gang, like the new attitude with the gang, maybe it would be safe. Yeah, yeah, they're they're they're, they're less lackadaisical. Yeah, the the pre co pilot getting absolutely eviscerated. Um, th- those days would have been bad with the mines. Mm-hmm. There is a a big change probably coming to Fetty Scum pretty soon, so uh, I'm excited for that to happen because I think it's going to be. It's not going to be as emotionally impactful as co-pilot dying, but it will be uh, a big change to how the the party interacts with each other in a similar capacity. That being said, do you think any of the other members of the cast realize at this point that Dallas's character is a double agent? Uh, I think... Tiny has hinted at uh, being suspicious. Whether or not Cat remembers is a different question. <laughs> uh, I don't think Matt or Mad Gun have any clue, but Matt's Matt's sharp. Matt Matt fucks around a lot, but Matt Matt is a sharp a sharp tool in the shed when he needs to be. So he he could put it together very quickly out of nowhere. Honestly, um, I don't think Lone Star knows, and I don't think Zach knows. As far as Furin, I think I think Furin is suspicious, but I'm not sure about him. I don't think he ever voiced it as Naps, his suspicion. So I don't know about his character. On the NPCs, Rast is clueless and Cav uh, doesn't care. Uh, if he turns out to be a traitor, Cav will murder him. So it doesn't really doesn't really care beyond that. So it's not really an issue. I mean, at this point, is anyone really a traitor in the group? Because you're a you're an army without a flag. Funny how that funny how that happened, right? Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> the option was there for them to stay with mm-hmm. the Federation. Mm-hmm. On- and and maybe in this most recent episode, I made a, a very clear option to return. <laughs> I'm kind of happy like to see them being like, nah, fuck that. We're gorillas now. 
Let's do it's this shit. Uh, it's definitely more interesting, I think. Uh, and yeah. opens up for more possibility. But it is absolutely, I'm trying to keep it completely in the realm of player choice here and give them as many options to go back as they, they can uh, so that they don't feel like I have pigeonholed them into being in this. What I'm going to say is a far more dangerous path for them. So, yeah. Oh, yeah Their you, decision. You've made enemies of both sides now. <laughs> you you have no backup coming in the middle of humanity's most deadly conflict. You were now a, an army of what seven, eight? Thereabouts, yeah. Depending on uh, a few things, but yes. So speaking of a few things, um, oh, there is there is a question that's been kind of in the back of my mind. And I've I've brought it up to you once. Okay. Um, many many probably... many episodes ago, and it's about the uh, the character that was voiced by Place. Yeah, <laughs> the uh, the radio operator. Um, if, if for for anyone that might not know what I'm talking about, the episode that Holden Bax gets introduced, there's this radio operator that makes the initial call. Mm -hmm. That they find slumped over, still alive, mm -hmm. but barely. <laughs> if you can, if you can find a way to to say anything without giving too much away, is there a plan for said character? Or has that already started somewhere else? Um, that is already starting off camera at this point since the party is away. I was afraid of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they if they if, if they played cards differently uh, in in uh, fucking Augusta base and things went out a bit differently than they did, then chances are they would have seen that play out in person. But uh, they, they kind of got the fuck out of there pretty quick. And so uh, things are playing off camera for that. So I got I got to figure out a way when when the consequences come kind of out for that for that particular character being alive and able to talk again. <laughs> when those consequences come to bear, I got to make sure it's uh, it's obvious that that is the, that that is the case. I'm curious how many of the players remember that happening. Honestly. Well, the thing about me. I don't I don't generally care too much. I'll remind them in the moment. <laughs> oh, I know you don't care, but it's it's from the from the audience side of it. Like it's a curiosity of like, did they catch what has happened? Yeah. Or have they entirely forgotten themselves? <laughs> uh, I, I don't think when it happened, I don't think anyone particularly figured out what exactly was going on. With that scene. Yeah, even even when it was fresh in their memory, I don't think anyone fully had a clue as to what was going on. I'll be honest with you. I'm entirely surprised that Dallas didn't, as Holden backs, try to be the one that transported uh, that soldier back with him just to, you know, have him miraculously not make it. Well, Holden's a bad spy. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, uh, I, I guess when you first meet him, you're like, oh, he's not going to do that. But like, eventually you're like, why was he picked for this uh, mission? He's really bad at this. This this might have honestly been Garma being like, I need to get this guy the fuck away from here. Garma's had some interesting ideas, and I've introduced those a little bit in the background with the monkey playing the, the video games. Oh, God, I forgot all about that. <laughs> That was that was on the Federation side, but that was a reference to Garma yeah. using training monkeys to be pilots, which is discussed in Crossbow. <laughs> so still going down to the line of um, the factionless thing right now. Yeah, um, it kind of works out for this next question that comes in from Twitter user Oddbark underscore a n. Um, uh, OK, when and if the, the gang survives to Zeta, do you plan on allowing them to be on different factions or will they all have to be on the same side of the conflict? I absolutely will allow them to be different factions. How do you think that you would uh, you would handle that situation? We, we would do a burst of episodes, two or three as one group, and then a two or three as the other group. It would be separate recordings. Okay. Separate sessions. Yeah. Would you, th would you ever think of kind of doing it as uh, recording the two separate sessions and then just kind of mixing them through? I know that would be probably hell on Dallas, but if it was something that's happening like at the exact same time, do you think oh, that if would it's be... If it's something happening at the exact same time, I would probably have the cast together, even though they aren't interacting with each other. Okay. Because there's always, I mean, there would at least be the potential that they could interact with each other. 
So we'd probably do that recording together, and that way it would save Dallas a lot of time editing. But if things, if, if the chronology doesn't matter and I can just stick with one group, then we're just spend time with the Titans group or the AU group or the Space Pirate group or whatever, and uh, just kind of hang out with them uh, for a few sessions before switching to the other group. So because Zeta is one of those weird moments where you have a lot of big players out there you've got a lot of factions you can side with mm -hmm. and they all interact differently throughout the whole series yep <laughs> it's uh <laughs> it's it's gonna be fun i'm very excited uh post one year war honestly but i'm trying to keep my excitement contained to ending the one year war uh so that my focus doesn't drift off too much because i want this ending to be very uh very satisfying to people who've listened to Fetty Scum over, you know, the last. I mean, it's gonna probably be three years when we finish. It's crazy. The uh, the one year war still doesn't take one year. Weird. Yeah, it's, it's almost like it's incredibly unrealistic. Insanely unrealistic, if you will. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna end up not doing the lightning round because I've ended up burning into him anyway. <laughs> cool, that's fine. <laughs> um, this one is uh, Twitter user Captain Ganymede. Hey, uh, Ganymede. For the DM, who was your favorite character or archetype to roleplay with the rest of the group? And any advice for those who eventually run the rules for themselves? Um, so for the first part of the question, uh, archetypes to play off the main cast. Um, I, I like playing uh, stick up the ass officers who are taking things very seriously against the main cast uh, basically playing the straight man to any jokes that's probably my favorite and it's my go-to if you notice if i ever have to pull a character out of my ass they are a uh they are an officer of sorts with a stick up their ass so yeah uh, as for the second part uh any advice for running uh the game as your own like uh you could run it now just uh you know it, the, the powered by the apocalypse version of the rules didn't have too much uh pre-planning put into it outside of the the the, the moves uh, which you could gather probably from listening but in the future running with this new rule set i would say just and this is kind of just general advice for any dm is just don't don't roll when it doesn't matter don't make people roll when it doesn't matter like you should only ever roll when the consequences for failure would be interesting if the consequences for failure is that they're just going to try again don't don't make players roll. It's a waste of time, especially in systems where there's consequences for failure. And it's not just like, oh, you fail. It's like, oh, you fail and you broke your hand. Uh, <laughs> don't make people roll willy nilly. I would say like your objective, at least with the system that I'm building, should be to tell a story with the players. Uh, you're there as the GM, not there necessarily as their enemy, but you are to reintroduce consequences, basically, so that they don't always get their way. Um, and you remind them that the world is cruel and cold and uh, suffering is 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 all over the place, especially in the one year war, especially in the one year war. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you're doing using this for something else. I guess you could change that. But yeah, that's it. I mean, that's a that's a pretty fucking solid answer. I'm not going to lie. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. This one comes in from Twitter user XC Delta. Um, have you guys ever thought of doing any live recordings on Twitch? Uh, we considered it, uh, briefly. It would need to be of like a heavily planned one shot, uh, simply because we don't want dead space and, uh, we, we, so we tend to cut off dead space. That's primarily what we cut out of Fetty Scum is like, oh, I gotta go get water. Oh, I gotta go to the bathroom or, um, mm, a, a player not being sure about what they want to want to do. And I'm me giving them time to think about it. Uh, me explaining the rules for the umpteenth time. All of these things are like stuff that's cut out of the episode. Uh, so first off, before we do any kind of Twitch live RP, we would definitely need to understand as a cast the rules a lot better. They would need to be like more definitive. In other words, written. Huh, weird. <laughs> yeah, so the rules need to be written first. Um, and even then, uh, it's, I don't know. Dallas's editing brings a lot to the show, and I don't know if the novelty of the show being done live would outweigh the value of Dallas's editing. I don't think it would. So in other words, I think no matter what, the live experience would be 
a lesser experience unless there was some other gimmick there, such like the chat controlling a player, an NPC or something, chat suggestions of what happens, things like that might make it more worth it. Um, so I'm not going to completely rule it out, but it has been considered. I just don't think it's worth it at this point. From um, an audience standpoint, I think it would be interesting to see you guys do it. I don't think I would want to see you do it with the main cast, though. Yeah, I, so that's that's more that's more likely. Me doing it with different people is probably more likely live. <laughs> it's like I, I think it'd be interesting to see like a random side side story mm -hmm. shot off somewhere in the middle of everything just to kind of have it, especially if, mm -hmm. if your intent is to kind of have some kind of chat interaction or otherwise, because I think the medium and the way that you've chosen to do your storytelling for actual Fetty scum, there's no, there's no other way to do that show. There really isn't. I don't think. Yeah, we're I, I think we're pretty nailed into our formula at this point. Um, and a live show would be kind of difficult. But yeah, uh, side stories make it probably more likely or just um, me and Dallas have something cooking for like random one shots. Um, those potentially could be done live as well. So we'll see where we'll see how that goes. Next one is from Facebook user Miguel Maldonado. Hello. To Adam, at the beginning of the podcast, you referred to a sergeant when the base was planning on evacuating as Rast. Is this the same Rast as Rast Marco? Fuck, man. You're going to have to help me out a bit. Uh, sergeant base. Uh, do you happen to remember which base he's referring to? This would definitely be um, the evacuation of California base. That was not the same Rast then. That was me pulling a name out of my ass, uh, which then became a name that I used for real later on. <laughs> uh, so when I come up with names, they tend to be, they tend to have a certain, I don't know, they tend to be names like Rast, Cav, they have a, a vibe to them. And that's how you can tell I pulled a name out of my ass. Uh, and some of them I like. And so I go back to them and use them more often. And so this was... Uh, this would be before I had Rast Marco planned as a character then. Yeah. It's like, uh, this question came in last night while Dallas and I had just finished up uh, his, his mm -hmm. interview. And Dallas kind of pointed out a thing of like you have you tend to have a, a, a grouping of names that you like to reuse yes um, yes i do <laughs> is rast one that's normally in the roster or was that a new one that kind of got brought into the roster during fetty scum it is a new one that brought in the what roster during fetty scum like i think probably you listening like the instance where i called a random sergeant rast was probably me coming up with the name right then and there and then i was like that sounds good i gotta use that later and then without remembering that i used it already used it for rast marco <laughs> that's probably exactly what happened fair which going back to that early in the podcast uh, there's a character that you threw in that that you gave a line to vent my frustrations on and i appreciate that still about <laughs> there being no such thing as a janitor in the damn navy <laughs> <laughs> God, um. <laughs> Tom was a spy this whole time. Tom was a spy this whole fucking time. How did no one know? There's no janitors in the Navy. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> There's no snow in Australia this time of year. <laughs> I, I, like, I definitely had, like, my moment of, like, slowly, like, shaking fists into the sky. And I'm like, you guys were doing so good until Tom got introduced as a character. <laughs> Look, I'm not a... I'm not a military head. This is uh... yeah, fair enough. I still love Tom. Tom Tom is best girl. I wonder what he's doing. I'm also wondering what he's doing. I wonder what Darty's doing. Ah, no, you just the uh, main cast just left her at Augusta base. Maybe one of the gyms with all's qualm uh, had Darty in it. Wait, was Darty it? I thought Darty left with uh, Godfrey. Not. Nah. She stayed. She 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 stayed at the base. That whole Darty. time, these idiots left Darty and didn't fucking bring her. Oh my god! <laughs> it's uh, it was uh, uh. Well, to be fair, she was moved with a different group. She was moved with like the actual um, the actual soldiers there. They basically were the cast were moved to like a uh, off the books kind of group, that R and D group. 
And then, uh, yeah, the people who were supposed to go to Jaburo were Godfrey and Cav. Mm, okay. This whole time, I thought Godfrey, Cav, and Darty all went together. No, Darty stayed at Augusta. Damn. She is still in the Federation. <laughs> and Godfrey, as far as you're aware, are still in the Federation. Technic Cav's still in the Federation. I mean, he's he's working on it. He said a wall sound like this a wall thing was pretty cool. So uh, yeah, you just can yeah. It, we we might see something happen in the next couple episodes. We'll see. We'll see. Cav just like smashing heads. Uh, I don't even know if Cav cares about the fucking Federation at this point. I don't think he ever really did. He doesn't like Zeon though, at all. This this comes in from a DM from the White Shadow himself. Oh the no. The man, the myth, the shadow. Okay. How does it feel to play the actual best character in Fetty Scum? Oh. Who's he referring to? <laughs> he left it ambiguous. <laughs> is he just talking about me or is he talking about Rast or Cav or I don't know. Which character do you think it is? Fuck. Um I mean knowing Shadow, it's I probably he's probably pretty entertained by Cav, so I'm gonna assume it's Cav he's referring to, just based on what I know of Shadow. So if that's the case, then how does it how does it feel playing the actual best character, and that being Cav Walker? Um, I love playing Cav, and it should uh it should tell you that it, like it should be obvious that I played him in other RPs that I love playing Cav. He's a very fun, violent character, <laughs> and I've played him in Zeta before, and he is a Titan. Oh, oh no. there's a yeah, there's oh, a no. bit of a warning of his trajectory. <clears throat> oh no. <laughs> to be fair, he was a Titan while not having this group with him. Now this yes. group's around. That might change things. Possible. Yes, possible. All right, Adam. Are you ready for the final question? Sure, I am, I think. Maybe. No, give me a moment. Give me a moment. Right, okay. Like are you are you are you comfortable in your seat? Are you, have you had enough water today? I'm drinking water now. Here, let me okay. finish it up. I'm pretty close. Okay. I always let my partner finish it. It's good. It's best. Uh, okay. All right, water's done. Yeah, that's 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 okay. That's the noise you make when you finish, Concha. Um. Well, I mean, that's a different noise, but I don't think I want to make it in this recording. Yeah, fair enough. So, this one came in from a a couple different people, um, and it's a it's a very very simple question. Where? Are the goddamn rules, Adam? <laughs> In this war, 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 Dead medium. Good.